website that I would ask you to go to. And it has opened the eyes of a lot of people who have actually taken the test. The test is on a site called 16personalities.com. That's one six, number one six, and then personalities with T-I-E-S. So personalities, P-E-R-S-O-N-A-L-T-I-E-S.com. So 16personalities.com, you go to that site, on the, on the top right hand corner, you're gonna get a button that says take the test. So some of you who might have take, taken the test because of your work or other sort of things, you probably know that the actual test is called the Myers-Briggs test. But this particular site has got its own way of making you do this test, okay? Now all you need to do is be honest with the test. You've got to tell the other person to be absolutely honest. And you've got to base it upon who you are right now and not base it on, base it on who you want to be in the future or who your ideal or what your ideal character should be like or something, something you want to be but you, you're not yet. Don't base it on that. Base it on who you are right now today. If both of you are honest, you're going to get a result. You're going to get your result she gets her result. After you get your result, I'll tell you exactly what to do, but when you're doing your test, please don't think that there is a correct answer to anything. There are in total 16 different personalities, and all 16 are very different from one another. There are pros and cons for every single type of character that is in part of the 16. There's no one who tops the chart, nobody. Okay? Everyone has got good things and everyone has got bad things. All right? So no matter how you answer the question, at the end, it's going to reveal a whole set of good stuff about you and a whole set of bad stuff about you. Don't try and fake the questionnaire because if you do, it's going to put you in a different category and you're going to have other things said about you which you're not really okay, right now. So it's going to really make you, it's going to mess your mind up. You're going to say, well, that's not me. So anyway. After you've answered the questions, whatever result you get, if it describes you 80% or more, then it's you. If it's less than 80% that you agree with this profile that it brings up, then you may want to take the test again. Okay? Because, and it'll never describe you 100%. So never think this thing will describe 100%. The, the, the test is such, you'll never get to 100%. But it'll reveal 80% accuracy of your good traits, 80% accuracy of your other side, it'll reveal more, it'll give you a good chart to work with. Okay, now, what you do then is, once you're, they'll give you like four letters, it could be like ENFJ, it could be like ISTP, whatever it is, take your four letters, take her four letters, now put them both together, Okay, this is gonna, no, one thing is, sorry, before, before I take, take you that stage. First is, once he's giving you a profile, there are seven pages. Read all seven pages, okay? She will read her seven pages. As I said to you last time, there is nothing wrong in you sitting with her mahram. So if her father's sitting there in the room, her elder, elder brother is sitting there in the room, you both got your results, you've got your results, she's got her results, you've read your seven pages, She's ready seven pages, and now you're ready to discuss with each other about the character of each other. And again, both of you can say, look, that's not me, because there's 20% that's not going to be true about you in this test. So you've got that much of a buffer. However, this will reveal for you a lot of things which otherwise you could never ask about, like how you make decisions, how you go about with problematic situations, how you are with a spouse, how you might be with, with uh, colleagues at work, how your mind thinks, how you go out with, 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 with um, you know, how you might become spontaneous, or not be spontaneous, what, how you might be a person who has certain priorities, and your partner might have other priorities, okay? So what will happen then is, first thing, you've got a lot of things that are revealed here. Second thing is, you could say, for example, if it was ENFJ, and ISTP. So all you do is go into Google, okay? 
and say ENFJ male with ISTP female relationship and then it will bring you tens and tens of pages now again you're going to have to do research because you're going to get conflicting information but if it's a non-match straight away you're going to see a lot of people saying well i'm an enfj male i've lived with an istp female and these are all the problems i've had and if you see a lot of people with that match saying they've lived together and they've had a lot of problems then this is a sign for you to probably say, well, I'm not going to get on with that person either. If you get a lot of people saying, well, you know what? ENFJ, ISTP, uh, and the male to female, and they say on the internet after reading page after page, because there's going to be a lot of forums, and you're going to have to go and read through the forums, okay? And be, be very, be non-wise, okay? Don't try and swing it by saying, oh, you just saw a couple of people saying it's going to work. Yeah, she's so beautiful. I'm just going to go for her. <laughs> like, don't be so dumb. Honestly, like, read the profile because it doesn't matter how beautiful a person is, okay? It doesn't matter how beautiful, like, I normally say this, and this might sort of be a little, little phrase for you to take away, right? It doesn't matter how beautiful her lips look, bro. Yeah? The tongue behind the lips is what matters. How that how that tongue is going to treat you is going to be how you're going to look at those lips afterwards. If you know what I'm trying to say, right? Doesn't matter how good her face is, how beautiful she looks with her face, what she what she shows to you from her inside through her tongue is going to be how your decision is going to be whether you want to stay with her or not stay with her. And saying. You know, just, just reverse it for the, for the male as well. Doesn't matter how good he looks, how he treats you, how he's going to be with you tomorrow from the inside is what you're going to base, base tomorrow on. So there are a lot of people who have gone, got married to beautiful people, beautiful people. But after a year, they can't stand each other. They absolutely can't stand each other. And there are people who have got together with people who are not so beautiful. But Alhamdulillah, their insides get on together. Alhamdulillah, they're going to be together for a long time, inshallah, until death departs them, inshallah. So, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot to do with what's on the inside. So now, you know, on this forum, you've gone through all of this, if you see a lot of positives, people say, yeah, you know what, me and her, we've really got on together. We had a few differences like this, let them talk about it, pick those things up. But generally, we've got on with each other, you know what, the more and more you see of this, that's a positive sign that that character you can get on with. Now, if you end up with 50-50, so this character and that character, they really you know, didn't get on with each other and they didn't get on with each other, you're getting both of these conflicting information, then, then you've seriously got to now base, you've got to base it upon the further questions you're going to give to this, this to be spouse of yours. Because you can't just go upon, uh, you know, the, the internet gave you mixed information. And when I say the internet, I don't mean internet as in anything no alhamdulillah look you know the internet has its good side and it has its bad side in this in this area there are a lot of genuine people on forums who are speaking the absolute truth about the relationships uh, of, of their characters and you'll find entire forums on emfjs entire forums on iron one of the intps entire forums of those people and they'll speak that how they feel how they are okay now you're going to make a decision to get married to someone stay with them for the next 50 60 years if both of you live that long how are you going to make a decision without knowing what's possibly on the inside now please i want to now bring in the parents here right now i'm going to bring the parents here which is that please try and understand that times have moved on right don't try and make it this is don't try and swing this whole thing because you know you've got to get married to her because she's your cousin right you know you got to get married to her because we decided this a very long time ago you got to get married because you know we think that this is the best person for you now have a little bit have a you know there's a there's a, there's a fine line between the expertise of the parents and between the choice of the of the of the um, the child that you have, both are important. So even if you're a youngster and your parents say to you things like, you know, from our experience, 
you know, because they've got other experiences that are not on this on this test, right? So let me let me say that to you as well. Your parents could say to you that we've seen getting married to people of this type, marriages don't last. Or we've seen this family has already made these certain decisions before the marriage. They've already broken the promise before the marriage. Now these things these things happen. They said they're gonna give you X amount of gold. And when they go and buy the gold, they give less than what they decided. Now that's straight away, that's deception, or that's, that's not meeting what their tongue said. If before the marriage, they cannot keep their word, what are they gonna do after marriage? Now these are serious things. So you better start saying to yourself that, you know what, I'll take my parents' experience on board as well. That's where you should take your parents' experience, right? They might say to you, well, there's a certain culture that you're getting into. And these culture, they have a stereotype. Now, stereotypes do exist, right? Now, we're not going to say paint everyone with one brush. That's really wrong. Don't be racist. Don't paint everyone with one brush. But there are certain things that certain people can have. So let's go to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sahabi came to the, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, I'm going to get married to so-and-so. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, have you seen her? And the Sahabi said, no. He said, well, what tribe is she from? And he said, well, she's from this tribe of the Ansar. And the Prophet said, go and see her. For the people of that particular tribe, they have a defect in their eyes. So it's a thing that could be genetic in those people. And the Prophet told the Sahabi to go and see her. Because if she's got this defect in her, in her eye, you agree to get married, you get married tomorrow, and then you end up seeing her on the wedding day, and you think, nah, I'm not. It's not happening, bro. I'm not getting married to her, bro. I'm not. And you start making excuses right in the last minute that you don't, get, you don't want to get married to her because now you've seen, oh, imagine the nikah has happened. You go home, and then you lift up your bride's scarf, look at her face, and think, nah, nah, please. Yeah? She put the scarf back down, and you tell her to go home. I mean, come on, are you going to play a game or what? That matter. So there are th certain things, whether they're genetically in certain people, whether they're a stereotype in certain people, whether it's a bad habit in certain people, they exist, all right? 